whatever the Sunday is after today. We are glad that you're able to join us whenever, wherever you are able to, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will bring us together in, in uh, worship and fellowship and in love this morning. So come, be faithful, raise the strength.
tactile and spiritual and prayerful and monetary, all the support that you have given our ministries. And uh, we thank you for your continued faithfulness with regard to that. And so let us bless those offerings that have been brought here or have been sent here. Heavenly Father, you have given us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you, but we ask, Lord, that you will bless our offerings and help us to use them wisely in your service for your glory. Amen. children and church friends. Today I have my new pink bear friend with me. What do you think of her? What crossed your mind when you saw this pink bear? What is your first impression? Maybe you thought it was funny to have a bear that's pink. Maybe you thought she was extra special because she's pink. Maybe you thought there's no way you would ever want a pink bear. Maybe you didn't really care that she was pink. Did you ever make the mistake of judging people by the way they look on the outside? I'm afraid that we probably all do that. In our scripture readings later, you will hear the verse from Romans chapter 14, verse 10. It says, why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Now, if you judge someone, it means that you are deciding what you think they're like without knowing who they really are. For example, if I decide that this pink bear is dumb just because it's pink, that's not being very nice or fair. God doesn't want us to judge others. First of all, because we are not perfect ourselves. But he also doesn't want you to just look at the outside of someone. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 says, The Lord does not look at the outside of someone. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So, wouldn't it be better if we looked at other people's hearts first, the way God does? A person's heart shows what they're really like. Kind, funny, generous. A person is more than just what they look like on the outside. Remember last week we talked about Joseph and his brothers? Joseph's brothers saw him in his fancy, colorful new coat, and it made them mad. Then they were mean to Joseph and sold him to become a slave in Egypt. Joseph's brothers focused on the one thing they didn't like, and they didn't judge him fairly. How do you think Joseph felt toward his brothers? In our other scripture reading today, we will learn what Jesus says about forgiving others. Do you think Joseph should forgive his brothers for what they did to him? Do you think Joseph's brothers should forgive him for his spoiled behavior? We can show love and forgiveness and kindness to others when we really try to know who they are on the inside. Maybe Joseph and his brothers should have gotten to know each other's hearts better than they did. Keep doing your Sunday school lessons this month and you'll see if they end up getting along and forgiving each other. In the meantime, you can try to get to know people from the inside out and not judge them for their outsides. Have you met any new kids in school lately? Or maybe there are new students in your neighborhood. Take the time to be a friend to everyone. Just like my new pink bear here, everyone deserves to be shown respect, kindness, and God's love. Please pray with me. Hello, God. Thank you for gently reminding us through your Bible that we should treat each other with kindness and forgiveness. We are thankful that you don't judge us by how we look on the outside. 
Help us to look at others the same way you look at them. Help us to remember that we are all your children, worthy of love and respect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we come to our intentional time of prayer. We are constantly in prayer about a great many things, but these are the special concerns that we bring this morning. We have had a great loss here at Rockbrook as Al Gore, a 50-year member of this church, went to the Lord this morning, Wednesday morning. Uh, we don't know anything about services or, or plans yet, uh, but Al will truly be missed. I can see he and Eunice back there in their regular spot. Uh, always here, always here uh, since I've been here, at least for communion, and always a joy to be with. So we pray for Eunice, we pray for the children and Al's family, and we pray for Al this morning and all of the people, the thousands and thousands that he touched throughout his years. This COVID thing is bugging me today. I'm, I'm frustrated. Um, as I was out this afternoon, I drove by Spaghetti Works in Ralston. It's the last restaurant that my family and I went to. 
for my son Alex's birthday in January. And it just saddened me. Something terrible that we, first of all, I, since this has started, I've hardly seen Alex because he doesn't live with us. And when I've seen him, we've worn masks. Um, but you know, I, I want normal back as much as anyone. And I pray that we can have the wisdom and uh, the patience and the drive and the, the gumption to stick with this and get something like normal back. So in this time of COVID, we pray, when we aren't sure, God, keep us calm. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, God. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't reach out with our hands. Help us to be socially connected as we need to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. We pray for the doctors and nurses, the health care providers. We pray for the technicians, janitors, aides, caregivers, all those who are out there on the front lines. We pray for researchers, theorists, epidemiologists, and investigators. And we pray for those who are sick, those who are caring for them, those who are grieving. We pray for all affected all around the world. We pray for safety and health and wholeness. May we Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, and house those without homes. May we walk with those who feel that they are alone. And may we do all that we can to heal the sick, even through this pandemic, in spite of our fears. Oh God, help us that we might help each other. In the name of our healer, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. first reading comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgments? on servants of another. It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. 
Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but, I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to reckon it, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and he, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who had owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord of all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That story begins with the question I mentioned last week. How many times should I forgive? Jesus' answer tells us it's not a matter of math or linguistics, but it's about the nature of forgiveness. Whoever counts has not forgiven at all. Loving our neighbor means forgiving without holding it against someone, counting the cost, or expecting anything in return. And then before anybody has a chance to ask any silly questions, Jesus continues with a parable about forgiveness. The parable has three scenes. You just heard it, so let me just highlight some things. Scene one is the king and the first slave. The amount of money is not a real amount. It's a metaphor. The talent was the largest unit of money. 10,000 was the largest possible number you could have in classical Greek. So 10,000 talents is the most money they were able to talk about. Far beyond any amount of money that anybody had. Far beyond what Jesus' listeners could have imagined anyone, even a king, having. So if Jesus were preaching today, Jesus might say he owed a gazillion dollars. The king showed unexpected compassion and forgiveness, forgiving this unpayable debt, and the slave goes on his way. In scene two, then, we have the two slaves. In contrast to the gazillion dollars that the first slave owed, the second slave owed about a hundred bucks. It's a lot of money, but a possible to pay back some of money. Unfortunately, the second slave didn't have a hundred bucks on it. That's when the first servant made a mockery of the king's compassion and forgiveness by doing just the opposite with his debtor, throwing him in prison. And Jesus tells us that others witnessed what happened. Someone always knows what's going on. Nowadays we say, assume the microphone is on. I suspect this was true even before there were microphones. Like most of us, the witnesses can't resist telling the story, and the story got back to the king. Presumably, the witness knew also about the king's extraordinary forgiveness to 
were the first slave. And like most of us, made comparisons between the two, just as Jesus' listeners probably did, just as we probably already have. Then scene three. As the first slave is called back again before the king, and the parable takes a disturbing turn. The slave is not recalled because of the debt. The slave is recalled because of his behavior after the king had forgiven the debt. And we learn that when we do not have compassion, when we do not forgive, we will be called to answer for it. This time, the first slave received no compassion, no forgiveness. He was never going to be able to pay the debt back. So, he would likely be imprisoned until the king remembered him which was probably unlikely, and decided to forgive him, which in that time for a king was very unlikely. The frightening conclusion is this slave and others who do not show compassion and forgiveness will be tortured forever. Fortunately, Jesus did not open this parable as Jesus sometimes did with parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus opens this parable with, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to. So when we reflect on this earthly king in this parable, it makes us wonder, what if God worked this way? What if God acted this way? What if God acts as we so often do? And, wow, what if God seeks retribution on us because of peer pressure from other humans invoking some human notion of fairness, which is not God-like fairness, in order for God to save face? Ooh. Fortunately, there's a difference between God and people. God never forgets us. God gives us many chances to make things right. We need to be more God-like in the way that we are compassionate and forgiving. And we need to do it before our time comes, when we are called to give an account before our King. The fellows of the Jesus Seminar found the lesson of this parable to be that forgiveness cannot be compromised without undesirable consequences. One of those fellows, the person I have met and talked to, my personal go-to guy regarding parables is Brandon Scott. And he reminds us of what we already know, that history is written by the winners. But he goes on to say, and it is written by those in power. So history is the story of royalty and warriors and even powerful religious leaders. But most of us are none of those things. Therefore, about most of humankind, history is silent. This parable stands in condemnation of that view of reality. It points to the utter corruption and the irredeemable character of a world organized by imperial rule. We need to learn a new system, a new way to organize things, a new way that the world should be ruled, a system like Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As Christians, we seek to act like Jesus, and Jesus told us to be more godlike. We need to understand the kind of God we hope to stand before on Judgment Day will also be the same God who judges everyone else. If when we judge others, if we choose to do so, it must be with the same compassion and forgiveness that we would wish for ourselves. Or, in other words, if we want to be judged by the God of scene one, we can't condemn people as we happened in scene two, or we will end up in front of the God that shows up in scene three. Lord, it's not easy, but help us, as we will sing in a moment, to accept each other as Christ accepted us.
Help us to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Help us to have compassion and real forgiveness and real love for one another as you have loved us. Amen. One other thing, 
uh, as we look a few weeks ahead down the road here at our church. October 4th is the first Sunday of October. It is World Communion Sunday, and we will again have the praise band uh, doing a concert for us. They will be doing it on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, again out back. Uh, they decided not to go with an evening because they might end up playing and having to put everything away in the dark uh, that time of year. It is. So uh, that is when uh, we will have our uh, Sunday service in addition to this, uh, this E service or virtual service. But out there uh, for the praise service is also when we will have communion for World Communion Sunday, and that will be our communion opportunity for October, so I hope you can join us in that. Meanwhile, as we look forward to those things, I ask for God's blessing to be upon you. May you know God for who God truly is, loving, compassionate, forgiving, awesome in every way, and may you feel that awesome presence walk with you as you go along life's way. In Jesus' name, amen.